Hello, everybody, and welcome in to eBible Fellowship's continuing Bible studies into the book of 1 Samuel, heard at this very same time, Monday through Friday. And we thank you for being with us wherever you are and however you're listening to us, either through eBible Fellowship's webcast audio or through Skype or perhaps through Pal Talk or even over the phone. And we pray that the Lord's blessings will be with us over the next 30 minutes or so as we now prepare to open our Bibles and introduce. Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of 1 Samuel. Tonight is study number 57, and uh, we're presently looking at the parable of the ten virgins found in Matthew chapter 25. And um, we'll just uh, jump right into that parable. We've been going verse by verse, since verse 1. And uh, the reason we're here is because um, back in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3, we read the phrase, before the lamp of God went out in the temple, and we saw how that identifies with um, the, the, this parable, because the lamps of the foolish go out. And there was a cry made in verse 6, uh, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And that cry has already been made. We can clearly identify it with the warning that God gave the world concerning uh, Judgment Day on May 21. The trumpet warning brought about all professed Christians, practically, to go to their Bibles, whether you believed it or disbelieved it. This is one thing for certain, that all went to their Bibles, their lamps, as as the lamp is um, representative, it's a figure of the Bible, as Psalm 119 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And even uh, if most professing Christians went to their Bibles uh, to find a phrase or the verse, no man knows the day or hour, which many did, and that's about as far as uh, they they dug into things. They, they didn't go any further. They were comforted by that verse. They they um, were encouraged by their their church authorities and pastors and priests and and others that 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 was sufficient. That meant that you could not know anything about Christ's coming, and it was uh, an astounding thing to see to see the whole church world in agreement on this question of no man knowing the day or hour. There wasn't a single church that that uh, was out there saying, "Oh, yes, uh, you 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 can know from the Bible that Christ will be coming." No, they all superficially read the Bible, saw that phrase, quickly grabbed it, and used it as a means of avoiding and ignoring and getting away from a real searching of the scriptures concerning these things, yet, even though that's true, we would still have to say they did uh, go to their lamp because that phrase is found in the Bible. Therefore, all turn to the Bible in response to the worldwide cry of Christ's coming Judgment Day on May 21. Just as we read here in Matthew 25, and after the cry is made, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. It says in verse 7, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So this, this was something that all professed Christians, wise and foolish alike, were involved in. They all were uh, turning to the Bible and and uh, and and seeing 
uh, what the Bible had to say concerning this declaration of the coming of Christ as the bridegroom is a, a figure of speech referring to Jesus. And and then it says in verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And, you know, th- this is uh, very unusual, because we know that the foolish virgins represent the unsaved. And the character of unsaved people is that they're proud and stubborn and they will not humble themselves. And this, this statement almost seems um, humbling. It, it's as though they're, they're um, uh, looking to the wise and acknowledging their wisdom. And, and yet that's not the case. That's never the case. Well, it, perhaps some have thought this this is related to Judgment Day, and uh, that is, of course, it is. But that is that these foolish virgins know they're under judgment, and 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 so they're now turning to the true believers uh, in an act of recognition that they knew uh, the truth and and the foolish did not. No, that that's not the case either. That's not what's in view. The Bible actually tells us, even in the day of judgment, even after God has pronounced the judgment, unsaved people remain in their sins and unrepentant. It, it says, for instance, in Revelation 9, And verses 20 and 21, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. It also says the same thing in Revelation 16 when the seven vials of the seven last plagues are being poured out and and this is judgment day in view and it says in verse 9 and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which has power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. This is the character of unsaved man. He he is not changed by the uh, actual judgment of God upon him. He remains stubborn. He remains proud and arrogant to the last until finally God annihilates him. That's the only thing that that finally uh, ends the sinful rebellion of mankind. It is complete destruction. And so these foolish virgins, they're not humble in heart. They're not humbling themselves before God. They're making no sort of uh, admission that they've been wrong. Well, how can we understand it? Well, let's read it again in Matthew 25, verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now let's look at this in the spiritual setting. And it is, the cry has gone out to the world, Judgment Day, and a certain date is proclaimed of May 21. And and, uh, the uh, professed Christians in the churches hear all about it, and they go to their Bible, and they don't see it at all. All they can see is no man knows a day or hour. And so they turn 
to the source of this cry. It's coming from the body of believers. It's coming from the wise. They, they turn to them and they say, give us of your oil. That is, you say that you see this. You have it, um, light. You, you, you claim to be enlightened to the information of the coming of Christ. All right, show us. Show us in the Bible. Prove it. Show us how this is so. Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. That is, when we look at the Bible, we don't see anything of the sort. In, in no way, it, it, God do, wouldn't allow man to possess this kind of knowledge. So it's not um, a statement of humility. It's basically a statement of, all right, you, you claim this, now prove it. And we heard many, many of those types of um, uh, arguments and those types of uh, communications from all sorts of people. You say May 21's Judgment Day. Well, where does it say that in the Bible? And and yet there was uh, no humility behind even the question, because when we would get our, involved in a discussion, they they had closed their ears and, and they would just uh, uh, return and answer. Well, the Bible says no man knows the day or hour, and so we would we would indicate and and try to answer that. Well, yeah, but we have to look at everything in the Bible, and look look at what God says here that a wise man's heart will know time and judgment that the Lord God will do nothing without first revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. And look at these examples. God forewarned Noah. He forewarned Lot. He forewarned Nineveh through Jonah and, and so on again and again and again. <clears throat> and yet they, they couldn't see it. Well, that uh, leads us into verse 9 of Matthew 25. But the why answer, after they said, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. In other words, we have sufficient. And that's all that God gives any person. He gives grace sufficient for each of us. Our grace is not sufficient for anyone else. We, God gives the Spirit to an individual. We cannot share the Spirit with anyone else. We cannot uh, share <coughs> the grace of God bestowed on us uh, with anyone, even if we strongly desire to do it. It's just impossible. And with grace, with the Holy Spirit, God gives understanding of his word to a certain degree. He gives eyes of enlightenment. He gives spiritual uh, sight to his people. And, and so that's what all the wise are saying. Uh, look, we, we can't make you see these things we can't cause you to understand what the bible's saying about this and it, it's not in us to do that uh, you know this is a result of god opening up one's eyes and and so then the statement uh continues but the believers say but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves now, the true believer is doing what true believers always do, and they're pointing these people to God. Go to God. You, um, I know you, you don't believe this. You don't see it. You, uh, you want us to prove it to you. <clears throat> you want us to somehow convince you. Well, we can't. We can't. Uh, we cannot open up your eyes. Only God can open up someone's eyes. So go to him. 
it, it, he's the source of our oil or the Holy Spirit. He's the one who has revealed these things to us. He's the one who typifies himself as a merchant man who involves himself with the buying and selling of the gospel. As it says in Isaiah 55, excuse me, in verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, God is is uh, typifying himself as a merchant man, but you see, he doesn't he doesn't want or need money. He's not trying to make a profit. It, he gives forth the gospel freely. Uh, it, it's the gift of God. The faith uh, comes as a result of God's gift to a sinner, and it's given freely where a man cannot purchase it. And and God even indicates an individual. Uh, is is just uh, under his wrath because he desired to purchase it. We read about that uh, in in the book of Acts. But nonetheless, God uh, pictures himself as a merchant who deals in the gospel. And that's the language that's picked up here, that uh, that the wise are answering, go to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And it's plural, them, because it's pointing to the triune nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So go to them. As as we know in the Old Testament, um, God's name, Elohim, is a plural name. But uh, he's, he's three persons, but one God. And yet it is... Uh, it, it, it's fine, it's biblical to use this kind of language um, it, in this setting to indicate God's triune nature. Well, h- here's what happens. They're encouraged to go to God to get oil, uh, which will lighten their lamp and, and uh, give them light so they can see these things. Go to God so you can... Uh, get the Holy Spirit, and once you become a child of God, you will understand. Now, you know, it, it, uh, just because this has been stated, um, that uh, concerning the the declaration leading up to May 21, that it was said that anyone who didn't see it was not saved. Well, I don't think it was particularly said that way, but it was said, and it was said because this is what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says in um, verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Here are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. So God indicates that judgment day, the the and Christ did return as a thief in the night to bring judgment, such uh, an incredible thief that the world doesn't even know that it happened still. Um, over a year afterwards, it, it, it was quite uh, an act of robbery in that sense. It was, it was uh, uh, well, anyway, when... When uh, the Bible says that Christ comes as a thief, but the the believers are not in, in the dark, they're in the light. And so he doesn't come as a thief for them. And this is why all the other statements fit. A wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. 
these statements are true. These statements are biblical. This is what the Bible says. And so, therefore, it's no surprise that God's people were looking, looking expectantly, looking um, with knowledge towards a certain date. And, and uh, of course, we thought, oh, no, that Christ didn't come. It didn't happen. At first, because we did not understand the the spiritual nature of this judgment. But now we um, have been corrected in that area, and we can look back and realize that God said it would be judgment day. That's uh, primarily the information the world was told, that you have until May 21, and then it will be judgment day. And then God said, that's the day the door shuts. So you have up until that point to find salvation. And now we're finding both of those statements are true and accurate and we're faithful to the Bible. And we had advanced information concerning them. We were forewarned. And so the wise did know that because we were in the light, the true believers were children of God, and the foolish or those in the dark did not know. And, and, uh, and so um, that, that, that um, is the, what the Bible declares. Well, going back to Matthew 25, it says in verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Oh, isn't that terrible? Isn't that awful? That it almost seems, if we read this a certain way, and this wouldn't be the correct way, but but here these foolish virgins were very interested, and then they were given information, go to them that buy and, and sell oil so you can light your lamp and and you also can be ready for the bridegroom and so they went to buy and while they went then the bridegroom came it it's almost um unfair it, it doesn't sound fair they they were uh en route they they were going forth following instructions from the wise and certainly they they would have gone to the one buying and selling, gotten their oil and come back and been ready. Why did the bridegroom come before they were ready? Since since they were um, involved in in uh, the process. And no, no, that's not how it is. They were told, go to them, go to God. To find the oil. Only God is able to give you the oil to light your lamp. Only God is the one able to open up your eyes so you can see when you look in the Bible these truths concerning Judgment Day. But when it says they went and while they went to buy, well, uh, we can be sure. They did not go to God. They went to another source of um, of merchants in the gospel. Uh, for instance, in John chapter 2, it says in verse 13 through 16, And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found them in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And that was true of Israel of old, and it's true of the churches of the New Testament, and, and especially the churches of our day, 
God um, in speaking of this church that that uh, had Satan as the man of sin or the beast who was ruling in the congregations and an image was made to the beast in uh, Revelation 13 it says in verse 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This language is telling us that it was, it was not possible for anyone to bring the true gospel in the churches. And, and you know, that's quite an area. We're talking about, about uh, almost a third of the world's population, around 2 billion um, of all these denominations, all these congregations. You needed to have the mark of the beast which is language indicating that you're, you're owned by Satan, that as you're in his kingdom, you're an unsaved man with an unregenerate mind. Your will is given over to sin and Satan and not to God. That's the mark of the beast on the forehead and on the hand. And no man could buy or sell. You could not be a bishop, a pope, a priest, or a pastor. You could not be an elder or a deacon in any congregation and remain there teaching and and bringing the gospel in any church of the world unless you had that mark. And, of course, God made sure of that because he commanded his people to come out of her. And, and no child of God should have been found anywhere within her by the time May 21 came. But you see, this tells us when the wise said to the foolish, go ye to them that sell and, and buy for yourselves. Go to, to the merchants of the gospel and the wise have in mind, go to God, go to the Bible alone, go to the scripture. But how that was interpreted how that was filtered through the understanding of the, the foolish virgins was, well, let me go ask my pastor. Let me go ask my reverend and, and my priest. And pastor, uh, I just heard judgment day is coming on May 21. Uh, what do you think? No man knows the day or hour, son. And someone goes to their elder I just heard this message of Judgment Day, and and uh, I don't see it in the Bible, but I want to know what you think. Don't worry about that. No man knows the day or hour. And constantly, this was the message of the church, fighting against God, arguing against the scriptures, and and just superficially, casually, surface skimming the Bible and not digging into the, the message at all. And so these individuals, even if they were interested, were caught. They were trapped and snared and hung up. There, there was no way they were ever going to find oil in the, in the place they went to look. They would never find the Holy Spirit in the midst of the congregations in order to light their lamps so that they could see these things clearly. And that's why, while they went to buy, because it, it was it an was, um, elongated process that would never end. They would never come to the knowledge of the truth. They were stuck uh, because they did not understand the day we're living in, <clears throat> They did not understand that God had departed from the church 
and that the only safety was the Bible alone and God alone. And and so that's why while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, Christ came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Well, we'll have to look at um, this interesting language in our next study. We'll um, probably just spend one more study on this parable of the ten virgins. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Chris McCann with his continuing studies into the book of 1 Samuel. These studies are heard every Monday through Friday night at this very same time over Pal Talk, over Skype, over eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over the phone. Lord willing, we'll have another Bible study for you tomorrow night into the book of 1 Samuel. And until then, may the Lord's perfect will be done. Good night.